friendship. It is the shepherdess at harmonyfarms.blog here coming at you with another winter vlog. We just moved to our winter pasture and we are encountering just a few logistical issues with respect to maintaining our electric fencing system. But we came up, thank the Lord, with what we think is gonna be a pretty good solution with minimal effort, which is always nice. And I think it's gonna be overall, it's gonna serve a lot of different purposes. So I'm gonna rewind and give you a look at our brainstorm. Okay, so this particular rotational grazing system for 10 acres worked out so well. The video I'm actually showing you was about six weeks ago and it worked out famously. So I am gonna take it here to the whiteboard before I proceed with the brainstorm on pasture. But the problem we were having was we ran a high tensile line right at this side of the pasture. Well, we have a very weak solar powered charger, it's about 0.22 joules, and it just wasn't carrying the charge from this high tensile to all the lines that we were running from that specific area. So, instead of running our power from a high tensile line, we are running our power essentially from six strategically placed ground rods across this 10 acre pasture. So what I did was I used the distance app on my iPhone and that uses GPS to give you an aerial view of your pasture. And I traced my pasture to find out just how much acreage I was working with and then I split up the acreage into one week's worth of grazing for my flock and my steers. And after doing that, we placed the ground rods As such now I think there's between four and six I can't quite remember how many we stuck out there I'll go double check but we strategically place these across the pasture and because we're moving once a week we simply just pulled up our solar electric charger and cinder block and moved them to each of these ground rods plugging them into the electric fence that we would run to section off those paddocks Another crucial thing is because our charger is so small, we ran a lawnmower up these lines to keep brush encroachment way, way down, and that made a huge, huge difference. Another really quick thing to mention is that this is assuming that you have a perimeter fence. These are just paddocks, and this right here is a pretty well set perimeter fence. So this is our winter rotational grazing system for 10 acres. Each of these was about a week to a week and a half stay. So we spent about eight weeks in this pasture. Now this system of just strategically placing ground rods instead of using this high tensile wire up here worked so well for me that I'm kind of considering implementing it on all of the other pastures. And the reason for this being is simply because this creates a lot of flexibility and allows me to use the tools that I have right here and now. So by strategically placing these as well, I can make smaller paddocks once that grass grow, starts growing again. It's winter right now, which is why we're on the larger paddocks and slower rotation. But when spring comes, all I need to do is just run another line of electric fencing and cut those in half for a stay that is half as long. Don't need to install any more ground rods, nothing. Just simply take the electric poly tape or the electric wire that I am using 
and create smaller paddocks. So super simple, but it was a system that really excites me and gives me a lot of flexibility, allows me to use what I've got right now and maintain optimal power on my electric fencing, which is essential for sheep. I'd have to say the only trick that I'm gonna have to overcome once this rotation is springtime and I've got these paddocks back here would be watering. So what you see right here, it's actually a pond. And so by having these paddocks for winter, they have direct access to water by, by way of this pond right here. So come spring, I'm going to probably have to run my solar powered siphon system into these more distant paddocks using a hose or something of the like. But that's gonna be a bridge to cross when I come to it. I am not worried for now. Solutions have been met. And I think I'm past my crisis. Yeah, no, that's the I problem. just lost my glove. I have, I have this problem where it's like I get super optimistic and nothing can stop me until something does and then I want to quit. And you're more of this steady, you know, person who just keeps doing things no matter what. So we're kind of a team here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sink a series of ground rods across the pasture and make it like an imaginary fence. In that, those will be power points in and of themselves. Whoa. And I thought, well, that's, a ton, that's kind of ridiculous. That's a ton of ground rods to sink in the ground. Well, if I was to actually cross fence something, I'd have to put like 12 T-posts in there. So it's like the same idea. difference and it will allow me more flexibility and I can move my solar electric charger along with it. So, I mean, I think it's gonna turn out pretty well. well I, how do you feel about that? Well, no, I think it's a good idea. Get a uh, an aerial view of the place and draw that exactly yeah. where you want and then we can keep those lines mowed. Right, to where you're, right, and you can even keep them mowed. These problems, as long as you got, and you can keep the ground rods in there, so it costs, so it takes, what, you know, how many, 30? Yeah, I mean, I, I only think it's gonna take 10 to get the cross fence I want, so. Then, and uh, then we'll keep those mowed ahead of time. Okay, that'll be super and good. that way you won't have any. I won't have the grounded out power issue. Exactly. That's good. And then the thing is, a lot of people install multiple ground rods already just to keep the power sharp. So oh, it's yeah. not like it's anything weird. So yeah. No, as long as they're up and visible, they're always gonna be. Yeah, there. I'll get six footers and then just leave a, a significant portion out yeah, so that they're visible and flag them. And so. then I think that'll be a really good solution for here. Okay. All right, thank you. So here is the field and it goes beyond, you know, it keeps going, it's big open 10 acre pasture um, and then you know because we're grazing like semi small amount of animals the paddocks sometimes they'll be like right here in the middle of the field and there's no access to the power so ideally you know we could cross fence it but we're just not doing that right now because we're not but I thought I saw it on the internet somewhere that somebody had just put a ground rod like right wherever they would put their charger. And so I thought, well, if I could be strategic and not, you know, not just plant 67 ground rods wherever, but if I could be strategic and think, okay, rod right here, rod right there, rod right there, rod right there, I would only need six. If I'm strategic and I only plant six ground rods, but it does the job for me, that's actually a really good plan. And number two is that people do plant these ground rods you know, they, they, they create systems just to bolster their electric fence charge with more than one ground rod. And then another thing was, if I was to cross fence, I mean, how many T-posts would I sink into the ground? Probably like 15 or 20. So the reality that I'm putting six ground rods in to amend for the absence of a high tensile main fence, that's really not a big deal. It's actually probably a pretty good idea. So what I'm gonna go with I think it'll work out I'll, I'll I'll be charting the process if it works I'll let you know if it doesn't work I'll probably pretend it never happened and I'll pretend it was Ruth's idea and not mine oh there's my glove 
here is my portable charging station. There's my six foot ground rod coming out quite a bit so that they'll know where to mow. Then this is a 0.22 Joule Gallagher electric fence charger. They discontinued this model, but you can find solar chargers anywhere. And then a cinder block for good stable surface. And this is just gonna go with me up the pasture. This will actually service, this ground rod will actually service four different paddocks, which will be about eight days. So I only need to move this guy every eight days, so. So Winnie, you are in solitary right now. You wanna come tell him why? He was super rude to the sheep. He was biting them and kicking them. That's super mean of you, but we're gonna give him a couple days alone and then maybe you're gonna be nice again. Rejoin the flock again. Yeah, okay, all right. How do you feel? Do you like to be alone better than you like to be with a sheep? I think he does. I actually think he does. Hello. How's it going back here? You being a good pretend dog, guard dog? Good pretend sheep dog? Is that you? Okay, sit. Hey, boo, sit. So good job. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't used to like him very much. He ate all of our chickens, but now he's good. Just gotta give him a little time. 